program in the extended series which explores some of the music of the English cathedral service. Today we visit Winchester, where the cathedral choir is conducted by the organist and master of the choristers, Alwyn Surplice, and accompanied by the assistant organist, Graham Matthews, who also plays the organ solos. Here to tell us about Winchester is John Betjeman. Hampshire has always seemed to me more like Normandy than other English counties. Those troutful, clear chalk streams, the bare grass downs, the straight plantations. It's a county that looks best in sunlight, which brings out the sparkle of flint, the red of old and brick tiles, and white stone and chalk, and light green meadow grass. Winchester, its capital, has four great things. The Norman Hospital of St Cross, south of the city, and the city itself, narrow streets, tile-hung houses, flint churches, Georgian brick, old walls and alleys, and thirdly, the famous college, founded late in the Middle Ages by William of Wickham, with its cloisters, chantry and chapel, and then the greatest wonder, the cathedral of the Holy Trinity, St Peter, St Paul and St Swithin, the longest cathedral in England. Christianity was brought to the West Saxons here by St. Birinus, only 30 years later than St. Augustine brought it to Canterbury. The Normans built an enormous abbey on the site of the Saxon one, very plain and white and tall and long. You can see the two transepts of this cross-shaped Norman abbey as you approach the West Front. And you come to this West Front which is low and comparatively unimpressive, through an avenue of limes from the city. And now wait. That must have been the idea of William of Wickham and his predecessors and successors who rebuilt the Norman nave in the late Middle Ages. Their idea was to make you gasp as you came inside, out of the weather, at the west door a low front, and then this huge, tall nave, white, elegantly stone-vaulted, stretching out beyond the screen to the choir and suggesting vista beyond vista and leading you naturally right to the very east end, behind the high altar, to where were the shrines of St. Berinus and the Saxon St. Swithin, whose body was brought here in the ninth century from the churchyard and at whose tombs miracles occurred. Like Canterbury, Winchester was a pilgrim's church. And that's why it was built, or rather rebuilt, with these great processional aisles. The monks wanted to continue their daily offices undisturbed by the pilgrims who were surging past, and so they screened themselves off with stone. Pilgrimages to Winchester were second only in popularity in medieval England to those to Canterbury to the shrine of St Thomas of Becket. But the Saxon St Swithin was a man of greater humility than the Norman saint. So let's take the pilgrim's route. Just by the steps that lead up to the east end at the tower crossing, there's a little stone-vaulted Norman chapel of the Holy Sepulchre. Its walls are painted with scenes of the Passion. And if you look in, you'll see what most of our Norman churches must have looked like. And now we come up the steps, past the choir, those blue and gold coffers standing on the stone screen hold the bones of Saxon kings. And had Harold won the Battle of Hastings, Winchester would have been the equivalent of Canterbury and Westminster Abbey combined. Look at the clustered columns in this stone vaulted church at the back of the high altar and giving on to the Lady Chapel. Where St Swithin was buried, there's now a modern tomb grill by Brian Thomas, built three years ago. It's covered by a yellow velvet pole sewn with crystal glass raindrops and gold embroidered suns. St Swithin, the weather saint. But now, see, between the clustered columns, 
a miniature cathedrals, stone vaulted and pinnacled, with little windows and niches for saints, and each with an altar. They are the chantry chapels of the great late medieval bishops of Winchester, in the days when being Bishop of Winchester meant being a power in the state as well as in the church. Their stone effigies lie mutilated by Puritans inside the chapels. The most complete and elaborate of these little cathedrals within the cathedral is down there in the nave, the chantry of William of Wickham himself. Angels are at his head and three tonsured monks are carved with praying hands sitting at his feet. I wonder if they are the people who supervised the carrying out of his great building schemes here in his native Winchester and at New College, Oxford. And now it's time to hear the choir. Come in and sit with it. The high altar there to the east and behind it a stone reredos reaching almost to the roof of the cathedral and westward over the screen the lengthening vault of the nave and in front of us on the floor between the two sides of the choir the tomb of William Rufus. The choir stalls are black as bog oak against the pale stone. They are the oldest in England and were carved in about 1300. And now for the music. The men's voices of the choir begin with a transcription by Dr. William Smolden from the medieval Winchester Tropa. It's a dialogue from the Easter Sepulchre drama, Quem Queritis in Sepulchro, Whom Do You Seek Within the Tomb? Quem Next, 
we hear Graham Matthews play two verse sets on the Magnificat by the 16th century Spanish composer Antonio de Cabezon, a famous musician who became blind while still a child. He was court organist to Philip II of Spain and accompanied him on his travels. And so he was present at the marriage in Winchester Cathedral of Philip of Spain and Queen Mary. Now the full choir, directed by Alwyn Surplus, sing two anthems by Batten. O oh, sing joyfully and deliver us, O Lord. Adrian Batten was one of the many famous musicians of the Tudor period and began his musical life as a Winchester chorister.
Samuel Sebastian Wesley, grandson of the Methodist Charles Wesley, took great pains to improve the standard of cathedral music in this country. He was organist in turn at several cathedrals and came to Winchester in 1849. And we now hear his anthem, Praise the Lord, O My Soul.
Now a choral prelude for today by Bach. Das alte Jahr vergangen ist, the old year is gone.
conservative music of this century. The choir will sing Strengthen Ye the Weak Hands by William Harris, and then I will lift up mine eyes by the present director of music, Alwyn Surplus. He wrote this anthem especially for the installation of the present Dean of Winchester. Then Graham Matthews will end the program with Vianne's Carillon.
That recorded programme was broadcast in our weekly series, Britain's Cathedrals and Their Music. It came from Winchester Cathedral, where the choir was conducted by the organist and master of the choristers, Olwyn Surplice, and accompanied by the assistant organist, Graham Matthews, who also played the organ solos. The programme was introduced by John Betjeman, who also introduces next week's programme from Canterbury.